Hey, welcome everybody. This is CP Cards and Dice, and welcome to Tabletop Baseball TV. We're doing another deep drive tutorial. This time we're going to focus on base running. Last time we did a tutorial that was on the splits and how to interpret the splits. Now it's going to be on base running. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. There is a small mini chart within a larger page of charts. It's called the runner chart hits. So um, on outs, of course, you're going to read the ground ball chart. And on fly balls, you're going to read the fly ball chart. But that's, you know, it all makes sense, all common sense. Um, once you look at it once, you'll, you'll get it. But the base runner chart is based on the base runner ability of the base runner. It's got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different levels. You've got a very slow runner. You've got a slow runner. you got a blank runner. you got a fast runner. you got a very fast runner. And you got a very fast plus runner. Now, these ratings are not based on their speed, although it sounds that way, right? It sounds very slow. Well, he's slow. Very fast. Well, he's very fast. Not always. You could be very fast, but still, it's unusual that you're going to get a slow rating, but you may be able to. I'm not too sure. But this is more based on the number of runs and your ability to move on the bases. But it's not a, a subjective rating. It's more of a metrics-based rating. So they figure out the norm of the for the season in terms of runs scored, right? Um, let's just say, I'm, this is not how it's done, but I'm giving you an example. Everybody, uh, the average is like a five, right? Whatever that number means. That's a number that they kind of came up with. The designer came up with that number. The average for the league and run scored is a five. If you're a three, you're going to be slow. If you're a seven, you're going to be fast. That's how simple this is. Okay, let's look. Dom Smith, right? He's very fast. He's, he's fast. Now, there's a modifier here with two outs. You shift one column to the right. So with two outs, and then, of course, the hit type of hit makes a difference. With doubles, you're always going to move two bases automatically. Now, can you move three? That's the question. Well, a fast runner, here is the column fast, on a double says question mark. What does that say? Well, I have a choice, and that's going to take me to the choice chart. Here is your choice chart, right? Right here. And from 0, 0, you have a specific result. Runner caught and run down. Zero, zero, 1, runner called safe on a close play. Zero, 02, runner called safe after a collision. Zero, 03, runner out. Zero, 04, out unless fielder covering bag is rated 2 or lower. Then he would drop the ball. Now, 5 to 41 is runner is safe. 5 to 41, runner is safe. Okay? Then 42 to 78, well, it all is going to depend on his rating. You go to the fast rating, well, a 42 to a 69, which almost is, what, 70, 30 points, he has an opportunity to be safe. So it goes from basically uh, 40 to a 70, um, seven out of 10 chances that, that he's going to be safe if he's a fast runner. All right, on a double. Um, and then, of course, now you get beyond 69. It's going to become 70, 70 all the way to, to 97 because then it goes 79 to 97. is going to be runner is out. So 70 to 97, which is basically 30% chance of being thrown out at the plate. So that's the deal here. Um, that's how you do that. When you see a question mark, right? If you don't see a question mark, you don't have to go to the chart. So let's look again. So a fast runner on second base with two outs, you would say, well, on a single, plain single, not a single plus, because you got a single plus, a single, and a double. On a single plus, it's going to be a question mark. So that means you're going to have to roll to see if you can score them. Okay. Now, if it's a single plus... And you can look at, uh, let's look at a, a hitter, for example. McNeil has a single plus 8, 9, and 10, where he has a single, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So he's not going to be driving in a whole lot of runs. Let's look at a Dani Chavaria. He's got a single plus 7 to 10, which is 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then a single, he's not going to have a single at all. So he's going to be driving in some runs. Now, this guy, Dominic Smith, is running, and he's a fast with – With two outs, he becomes very fast on a single, but he still doesn't score automatically. You're going to have to roll on the choice chart. <clears throat> and then a single plus. Now, if you roll a single plus, then the fast runner scores automatically. The very fast uh, scores automatically. Now, if he's an average runner, let's find an average runner. Brandon Nemo, he's an average runner. See that? There's no there's no rating there. Well, an average runner is going to be here in the middle where you see a blank. And on a single plus, right, he's going to have a question mark to advance a base, whether it's first to third or whether it's second to home. Whatever that extra base is, he's going to have a question mark. He's going to have to roll on a – on, on the choice chart, unless there are two outs. If there are two outs, he's going to move one to the right, which would be yes. Again, Brandon Nimmo with fewer than two outs. On a single, can he score? Can he get the extra base? No. So really a single is not really meant to take an extra base. It could be an infield hit or it could be a line drive right in front of the, the outfielder to where he just picks it up and he throws it back in. Okay, but with two outs, then he's going to move up to like a blank runner like Nimmo. See, it's blank right there where it says run. With two outs, it says move one to the right. So now he'll have a question mark with a regular single. With a single plus, he'll score automatically. With a double, it's still going to be tough. Even though he's fast now and there are two outs, he still has to roll on that chart. Okay, so – and on that chart, I'll be I'll be serious. Three times you try, and it's easy to hit that 30% mark and be thrown out three times. Um, so this is something you have to be very cautious about, and maybe it, it – you know, it, it does have a potential effect of making you a little bit too cautious to where you say, ah, I don't want to run the risk of being thrown out and, and basically, you know, killing the inning. Let me just go station to station. All right, so those are some of the factors involved. Um, Adeni Chavarria is another fast runner. Let's look at somebody who's very slow. For some reason, I don't have my uh, – very slow. Okay, Thomas Nito. He's a backup catcher for the Mets. He's very slow. So very slow puts you – can he get the extra base on a single plus? No. Can he get the extra base on a single? No. Can he get the base on a double? No. But with two outs, he may be able to get an extra base because he can move up to slow. Right there is a question mark. Okay, so there are times when he can get the extra base. On a double, um, he's not going to be able to get the extra base. He's going to have to stop at third because he the best he can do is go from very slow to slow. Now, a slow player can go from a no to a question mark. Again, you would have to roll for that. Anytime there's a question mark, you have to roll on the choice chart, and that's on the back end. So a very slow player is not going to get very many extra bases, which is you know absolutely logical and reasonable. Now, for some reason, I can't find the Mets starting lineup. Oh, I think I know where they are. I saw another section here with uh... – here they are. All right. I played a game between the uh, the Padres and the Mets, and I left them together there. The ground pitch in that game, I believe. And uh, here's the starting lineup for the Mets, and you're going to have J.D. Dave. Most guys are, are average. In other words, they have no uh, rating there. So it's going to be that blank section right in the middle. This is the run chart right on top here. There are only two charts, guys, back and front. 
So that's the run chart. It tells you what to do in case of a single plus, a single, or a double. You look at the run rating, which is in this box. It could be a blank, which means it's a blank. Okay? That's the way the designer chose to do it. My job is to explain it and to understand it, not so much is to get into his head and try to figure out, you know, what he was thinking. He's thinking whatever he's thinking. I don't know. I don't have control over that. Pete Alonzo, he's slow, so he'll have that opportunity on a double. If there's two outs, he'll be able to potentially score. You can roll a dice. You can roll dice on the choice chart for him there. Wilson Ramos, known as the uh, Buffalo, he's very slow. So he won't advance on on with fewer than two outs at all. But uh, potentially on a single plus, he could advance in the extra base. So there are opportunities for these guys to get the extra base. There are not a lot of opportunities. That's really what it's all about. It's all about percentages. Robbie Cano is average. Frazier is average. Conforto is average. Ligares is very fast. So he has a potential of getting a very fast plus rating, which would make him advance in all cases, that extra base. So Ligares can easily go from first to third with two outs easily. There's guaranteed um, in, in, in either single. And he, even, he can even go three bases on a double as well. So it's a very cool system. Now, another player who surprised me who got a very slow rating is DeGrom because he's, he's a good athlete. He got a very slow rating. All right. So I just wanted to go over that. Now let's look at the Padres. Again, most players are the no rating, which is in the middle. This is very fast. Margot is very fast. Machado is no rating. Eric Hosmer is no rating. Hunter Renfro is no rating. Framil Reyes is slow. Francisco Mejia, that's, I believe, their catcher. He's no rating. Luis Urias is no rating. Eric Lauer, the pitcher, was very slow. And then Ahmed Rosario should be with the Mets. He's fast. I made him a fast. I spoke to the designer, Chris, and he said ah, he was in the gray area. He was no rating, but I made him fast because he can fly. I watch the Mets all the time, and he's probably the fastest player on the Mets. Um, so here you go. You got some slower ratings. Your, your typical rating is you're going to be your average rating. So once you memorize this, this is very simple to memorize. Okay? You're going to know that an average guy with two outs always goes the extra base. Right with two outs. You're going to know that an average guy on a single is not going to get the extra base. But if there are two outs, he's going to have the potential of, of extending it. And on a double, he can potentially – an average guy can potentially get the, the extra base. Even if there's two outs or not two outs, you can potentially – there's two question marks there. So this is mostly what happens, and that's mostly what you got to know right there. And that's easy to, to remember. I mean, single plus, yes. A single, no, unless there's two outs, then it's maybe. And then a double, it's maybe, maybe. And that's it. Those are the things that happen the most. Because, look, you only got you only got three players that are outside that. And you already can also memorize that if you're very slow and they're not two outs, you're not going anywhere. If there are two outs and it's a single plus, single pluses always allow you that opportunity. So this is like a single in the gap or a single down the line where the outfielder really has to hustle to to get it in quickly. That's the opportunity for you to get there. Now, it doesn't distinguish between hits to right field or hits to center field or hits to left field. Doesn't distinguish, but I'm not here to look at what it doesn't do. I'm here to look at what it does do and to explain it. Okay, so um, you can always add a, a a you can you know what it's easy to to this is so easy to modify. That's why I like this game. Like let's say it's a hit to right field, you roll and it's a hit to right field, and you want to go from first to third. Well, guess what? You can move it one more to the right, move it a double, and make it a yes. You can do that, right? If it's a hit to right or if it's a, a ground ball, um, um, well, you, you can always roll for singles, too, to see where they were hit. If they're hit to the left side, you don't advance. If hit to the right side, you have you move one one up, one to the right, without it, there being two outs. So if there are two outs and it's to the right, it's, it's a hit to right field, that's a single plus, what, right? And, and you roll that it's to right field, then you can move two to the right. So a blank or a slow runner now becomes a fast runner. You could do that as well. So there's a lot of ways you can mess with it, tinker with it, have fun with it. But I love them. First of all, one thing I really love about deep dry baseball is the cards. Okay. The cards are so easy to read. If you get a little bit of light on your table, there's so much space between all the numbers. The fonts are fairly large. 
the identifier is really bold and large. Then you have these 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 boxes that are clean, clean and and spacious to where there's no clutter and you can easily see. You know this this bat. This is a picture card. This is an unusual card to look at. This is a uh, a a picture card that tells you his his wild pitch rating, his balk rating, which is, I don't I don't think is needed, but that's just my opinion. And then his pickoff rating, which is another thing that I think is so unusual that I don't think it's important. But that's you know that's not for me to say. The designer chose to do this, and then you have his batting. What kind of batting does he have? Um, and then you have a set of pitcher batting cards. Here they are. Pitcher batting cards A, F, um, C. You got all the different letters. He's a B batting card. Let's look at see what that looks like. He's a B batting card. There you go. So it's rare that you get into a deep drive with him. He's got a single from zero to zero one. Zero two is a single. And then uh, no walks, no hit by pitches. Three to 29 is a strikeout. 30 to 31 is defense. So however the system is, oh, base running. Let me do steals. Let me do steals as well. Now steals is something that's very unique, and I'm going to finish this quickly. Let's look at stealing numbers for uh, – Now, Ahmed Rosario is really the only guy that – let's go to the stealing chart. Stealing chart should be right here. Okay, stolen base chart. The higher the number, the better the base dealer. So if you can get a number up to 7, 0 to, 60, zero, zero to 63 is going to be a stolen base. That's a 60% chance. If you can get up to 8, 0, zero to 78, which is almost an 80% chance of stealing a base, if you're an A-plus base dealer, the higher the letter, the better the base dealer. The higher the number, the better the base dealer. The lower the letter and the lower the number, terrible. Here you can only steal a base 0, zero to zero 02. All right, 2% chance. And being thrown out, never. Because you probably never got thrown out. You had one stolen base and you never got thrown out. So it's very simple to read the stolen base chart. Ahmed Rosario was a 2C. So automatically he has a 2C is a 10% chance of stealing a base. Unless the pitcher's terrible, now he's got a 25% chance of stealing a base. If the catcher's bad, now it goes up to 30% chance of stealing a base. If the catcher's super bad, then it would become a 40% chance of stealing a base. And he only had 19 stolen bases. So you're going to have to run a lot. He gets caught stealing a lot. He, he, I think he had 19 stolen bases, but was caught like 10 or 11 times. So that is probably the highest rated base runner for the Mets. But again against uh, the poorer catchers and poorer pitchers with poor hold ratings, that's going to play a role. So that's it for stolen bases. Very simple chart to understand. It's one small chart right here. You got to look at the game. You can't just, you know, not look at the game, not know the game and say this is too complicated. It's too complicated because you never looked at it. There's one chart. High numbers and high letters are good. In other words, think about your, you know, you're in school, right? You get an A plus on your paper. Wow, that's great. Well, that's what this is, A plus on your paper. If you get a nine on your paper out of 10 or a 90, let's say, that's pretty good too. So a nine and an A plus is like you steal the base 90% of the time. Okay, if we go into the 70s where, you know, more guys were stealing bases, if we go into the 70s cards, we can look at that. And a guy like, uh, let's see here, Bert Campaneris, right, is going to be a 3A. So a 3A is automatically 25% chance of stealing the base and only 3% chance of being caught stealing. Okay, but then there's a poor pitcher and a poor catcher now becomes a 40% chance. If it's a really poor hold pitcher, then it becomes a 60% chance of stealing the base. And if you get a really bad catcher now it becomes again a 60 percent chance it was a 56 now it's a, a 58 chance so it moves up slowly but surely there's a real jump here between seven and eight where it goes to a 58 percent chance to a 72 percent chance so that's a 14 point 
increase if you become an eight or a nine. And I guess guys that stole over 100 bases, I don't have any cars like that, like guys like Henderson, would be all the way at the top. They'd be stealing bases at will. Let me see if I have any other guys that are rated. Now, a zero C, a zero C, I know that's terrible because that's low. And the C is eh. C is like average, right? Or it's not very good. You want A's and B's to be your main base dealers. That's what you want to do. So there's not a lot of those guys. Um, so it's something that you don't have to lose sleep over, I don't think. So that's a stolen base chart, um, and that's base running. So I did the base runner chart. I did the choice chart, which is here. Um, and then I did the stolen base chart. That's all the base running charts there are. And, of course, you got the hit and run chart, which that is self-explanatory. Depends on what you roll, a walk, a hit by pitch, a strikeout, defense, or an out. Right? This is very simple. It's just common sense. If it's a ground out, it's not going to be a double play. If it's a line drive, it's a double play. If you remember that, that's the two main things that are going to happen here. Now, if it's a deep drive, you're going to have to read it. If there's a ball, There's you got to roll. If there's a strikeout, you got to roll, and that's it. So that's pretty simple. So this CP, Cards and Dice, Tabletop Baseball TV. This is another tutorial of our tutorial series for deep drive baseball. Lovely, lovely game. Uh, it's $12 for the whole season. Two charts, one page of rules back in front. And, uh, and I've gone over a lot of the different chunks. And as I get questions, join us at Facebook, uh, Deep Drive Baseball Facebook page, Facebook group, Facebook group. And you can ask questions there. When I get a question, I create a little mini 15-minute tutorial uh, because I'd rather have it that way. And then if I still have questions and the tutorial did not answer your questions, then I can answer them or somebody else can answer them. You also have a Delphi page, uh, Delphi for Deep Drive Baseball. And that Chris Wood is there, and he mans that, and he's always answering questions. And sometimes we get into a little bit, and it's all in good fun. He's got a great game, and uh, it, it gets a lot. Of, it, it's very, it moves very fast. I'm going to play a game in a little while, and you'll see how easy it moves. I got a lot of videos up. It's it's really really it's a combination of all the games that we really love. If we grew up in the '70s and the '60s, Appa and Stratomatic. It has a little element. It has small elements of Appa, Stratomatic, and Status Pro, the '70s right? The upper seventies. And then it has a little bit of the modern games because it has some interaction between pitcher batter and the ballpark. So then it has a little bit of inside pitch and replay baseball and, and payoff pitch and all those things. So you really get a little bit of everything with this game. And it's really something that people are, there's a whole bunch of guys that are now starting to play, starting to discover and starting to say, Hey, this is kind of cool. And it, it really is fluid. It's elegant. It's designed very elegantly and it's very fluid in its play. The mechanics are streamlined. Um, now, you can, can you start picking picking at it and saying, well, it doesn't have this, doesn't do that, doesn't do the other, doesn't do this, doesn't do that. Yeah, sure, we can do that to everything. You know, but that's uh, – then it's not for you, you know, or, or it is what it is for when you want to play and you're in the mood to have like a an easygoing game that still has a lot of nuance and has a lot of detail and has – but it's kind of abstracted, right? You don't get to roll for every aspect of it. Um, it's abstracted. And the metrics are there. It's all based on metrics. And Chris is an amazing math guy. He's like a math whiz. And uh, he'll tell you, if you ask him a question, he'll, like, blow you away with all his, his numbers, which is really impressive. So this is CP Cards and Dice. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And I will see you guys in a little while with a game between the Oakland A's and the – who are they playing? The Chicago White Sox. Take care. 1971.